There isn't a passage in the Bible that has ever made clean shrimp, cats, dogs, lizards, pigs, snakes, or any animal that God created biologically unclean. Jesus dying on the cross didn't change the biology of those animals. Jesus didn't come to earth to cleanse pigs. He came to cleanse people. Hey everybody, my name is Lee and this is the second video of a series of videos called Taken Out of Context, where I cover Bible verses that are sometimes controversial between denominations and are frequently taken out of context. Now, like I said, this is the second of probably several videos on this topic of unclean meats. I'm going to cover each verse that is used to support the eating of unclean meats like pork and show how that view isn't actually supported by the Word of God. This video covers the context of Mark chapter 7, Matthew chapter 15, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. We have two different accounts of the same event, and that's Mark chapter 7 and Matthew chapter 15. The argument made here is that Jesus declared all foods clean in both of these chapters. There's even some newer translations that put in parentheses, by Jesus saying this, he declared all foods clean. The New Living Translation says, By saying this, he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. In Mark chapter 7 and verse 19. Now, the parentheses mean that the translator inserted his interpretation of this passage, and it's not in the original text of the Bible. The King James Version does not have this text. Alright, so let's dive in. Why is eating unclean animals an abominable thing? And does the animal make you unclean? Listen here as I read through Mark chapter 7, verse 1 to 16 real quick. It says, Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now, when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they washed their hands in a special way. Now, don't miss this, holding the tradition of the elders. When they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper, vessels, and couches. Then the Pharisees and scribes ask him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the, listen again, tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashed hands. He answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophecy of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. He said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father, your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, If a man says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is Corban, that is a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down. And many such things you do. When he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand that there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come from out of him. Those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. Did the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil defile Adam and Eve? Let's read. It says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. Was this fruit 
from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for food according to God? Was it made for food? God said, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17. Was it the fruit from the tree that brought death to Adam and Eve? And in turn, all of their descendants? No. It was their disobedience to God. God told them not to eat it, and they did it anyway. What was Lucifer's first sin? The Bible says, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the further sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. That's Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. When Jesus says, Hear me, everyone, and understand, there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. It's not the animal that makes you unclean. It's your rebellious heart. God said, don't eat pork. He said, don't eat shellfish. You're not unclean by those things which you're eating. You're unclean for disobedience to God. God told you not to eat them. So we don't eat them. It's that simple. Is the context of the discussion unclean meats that are being eaten? No, it's not. The context of this conversation is eating with unwashed hands and the man-made doctrines that the Pharisees hold. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 9. Now, let's read Matthew chapter 15 verses 1 and 2. It says, Then the scribes and the Pharisees, who were from Jerusalem, came to Jesus, saying, Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Jesus was the example of how we should live. The Pharisees made some pretty ridiculous laws, and they thought by keeping those laws that they could save themselves. Jesus is teaching a valuable lesson here. That the man-made doctrines that the Pharisees were keeping were not going to save them, and that it's your heart that becomes defiled by not obeying God. Now verse 3. He answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother. He who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you may have received from me is a gift to God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites! Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then his disciples came to him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Then Peter answered and asked or and said to him, Explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, Are you also without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth and goes into the stomach is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. And they defile a man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. 
but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Matthew chapter 15, verses 3 to 20. Now, many people say, hey, Jesus said, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, it goes out into the draught, purging all meats. In Mark chapter 7, verse 19. Is he talking about unclean meats here? No, he's not. The King James Version uses the word meats, which is the Greek word broma, which means foods. And the New King James Version uses the words foods, purging all foods. Now I have a question. Did Jesus consider pork a food? Did his disciples consider pork a food? Did they consider anything from Genesis that Noah took onto the ark by the twos, the animals that God identified as unclean, did they consider those animals food? Remember, in the book of Genesis, God told Noah to take two of every unclean animal and seven of every clean animal. Then in Leviticus, God tells us exactly which animals are clean and unclean. Did Jesus consider those animals food? Absolutely not. What else did Jesus consider meat? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree, and which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. The New King James Version says, To you it shall be for food. King James calls it meat. New King James Version calls it food. God calls fruit of a tree meat. Meat is food, and food is meant for consumption. God doesn't call pigs, dogs, cats, shellfish, or anything of that nature food. He calls them unclean animals and an abomination to consume. The fact still stands that you don't defile yourself by eating any food. Food is what God has prescribed for us to eat at creation. We aren't to eat what is harmful or unhealthy. Not because eating makes us unholy in itself, but because God told us not to eat those animals. And disobeying God is what defiles you. There isn't a passage in the Bible that has ever made clean shrimp, cats, dogs, lizards, pigs, snakes, or any animal that God created biologically unclean. If you see my last video, you'll hear two words that are used by Peter in Acts chapter 10 and verse 14, among other places in the Bible. And those words are koinos, which means common or defiled, and ekathartos, which means unclean. In Mark chapter 7 and verse 2, what is the word used to describe what the Pharisees are accusing Jesus of? It's koinos. That is to say, Jesus' disciples were ceremonially defiled. Another way to describe koinos that I probably should have said in my last video is that it means defiled by contamination or association. Contamination by the way it's handled or defiled by being shared by many, also known as common. This was a legalistic view that Christ didn't hold. He touched lepers. He allowed a woman to wash his feet with her tears and hair, anointing them with oil. And a Pharisee said, if he knew what type of woman she was, he wouldn't allow her to touch him. The Pharisees tried to keep the law by making man-made doctrines. They believed that eating with unwashed hands defiled a person. Jesus taught what it meant to actually keep God's law. Exactly where in the Bible does it render all the dietary laws invalid? The laws of the Old Testament that are no longer required to be kept are those that pertain to animal sacrifices and feasts that pointed to the coming of the Messiah, which is the handwritten book of the law by Moses. They were a shadow of things to come. The Old Testament is not an invalid book. Listen to what the Bible says in Galatians. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, 
which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and who want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him him be accursed. Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 to 9. The gospel of the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, is the same as the New Testament, the New Covenant. And God is the same. God doesn't change. There is absolutely no change in God's law from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Man's law has changed. God's law has not. The animals made biologically unclean are still biologically unclean. Animals, however, they now don't have to go through a ceremonial process. Christ already came. The Lamb of God was already sacrificed. Don't let anyone judge you in food or in drink or new moons or Sabbaths. Drink offerings, burnt offerings, peace offerings, sin offerings, guilt offerings, they aren't necessary or even appropriate anymore. Christ was the fulfillment of those ceremonies. Ceremonial Sabbaths were special rest days in connection with the yearly festival cycle, not related to the seventh-day Sabbath or to the weekly cycle. Each of these other Sabbaths, or days of rest, fell on a fixed day of the year and thus on different days of the week from one year to the next. They are therefore properly called annual Sabbaths, in contrast with the weekly Sabbath. These days which work was forbidden beside the Sabbath of the Lord, Leviticus 23, 38, were the 15th day, the first month, which was the first day of unleavened bread, the 21st day of the first month, which is the seventh day of unleavened bread, the sixth day of the third month, which is the day of Pentecost, the first day of the seventh month, which is the Feast of Trumpets, the tenth day of the seventh month, which is the Day of Atonement. And then the fifteenth day of the seventh month, which is the first Feast of Tabernacles. The twenty-second day of the seventh month, which is the seventh of Feast of Tabernacles. There is a distinction between the annual Sabbaths and the seventh-day Sabbath of the weekly cycle. The annual Sabbaths were part of the ceremonial system that pointed forward to the life of and death of Christ and ceased to have meaning when Jesus died on the cross. If Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 was something that you thought of differently and you believed that this was referring to eating anything you want, to drinking alcohol and to not keeping the Sabbath day, hopefully the Holy Spirit along with this video has brought you some clarity. Mark chapter 7, Matthew chapter 15, and Colossians chapter 2 have nothing to do with eating foods that were made biologically unclean. These animals do have a purpose, but it's not to be eaten. The animals that are unclean, they're scavengers, and they eat leftovers or waste of the earth. If we choose to eat them, it's not their flesh that defiles us. It's our rebellious heart as that's where sin begins. Just like Eve saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desirable to make one wise, she coveted something that wasn't hers. She stole something that didn't belong to her. She consumed something that God told her not to. She desired to be like God. It all started from a thought, from the heart. For out of the heart proceed evil things, murderers, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. You defile yourself by disobeying the Creator. He has told us from the beginning what animals are clean and unclean. Jesus dying on the cross didn't change the biology of those animals. Jesus didn't come to earth to cleanse pigs. He came to cleanse people. Animals that were unclean then are still unclean now. Thanks for watching.